Welcome back guys, this is Mark with NC Engravers and today we're going to be working on the Prodigy. Now this is going to be a pretty interesting build. I think you're going to have a lot of uh, information to take away from what's going to happen today. I want to take you guys through that a little bit. I want to give you the backstory of why we decided to do something uh, to the Prodigy and kind of how this came to the surface and how, how moving forward what you see in this video will end up being an offered service. So uh, first and foremost, we have a customer that we've done an absolute ton of projects for in the past and recently they've been sending a bunch of stuff in for porting and some things like that enchilons and some other things and it was it was one of those deals where we've started offering new services so hey why don't we do something on the prodigy while this is all taking place now we've always sort of had the the idea or the intent of building something for the prodigy and to be honest with the uh tech tech ops um for the Rock Island. Those are two guns that are sort of not changing. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of manufacturers out there making guns, but you know, they may make a model where this one has front serrations and that one doesn't, or this one's a full dust cover and that one's not. Um, and we really wanted to create a design geared around a weapon that seems to be popular and seems to be not changing, right? So we can, we can technically create cut work that would go on all of them instead of a portion of work that would only work on some of those models. So that's kind of where the Prodigy came in. It was why, you know, hey, a lot of people have these guns. Uh, why wouldn't we just create one pattern that sort of works with all of them and then go from there? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, top window with barrel porting. Now we have done this already on the 1911s. There have been several people that have sent in. We've had some local people. We have some people that we've mailed out of, out of state. And um, they seem to be really happy with that work. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're going to be doing on here, of course. Once again, going forward, any of the services you see in this video will be offered. You don't have to get everything, but you do have the option of picking the pieces to the puzzle that you want. One of the other things that we discussed with the customer was, what do you think about doing a little bit of a side shave and a little bit of window? You know, what do you, what do you think about adding some actual um, detail to this overall? So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to do a little side shave up and through here, down through here, and over in here. There'll be a window. Um, I'm bouncing around the idea of doing windows in these serrations. I just haven't got that far yet to kind of take a stab at whether I want to do that or not. There's a lot of complicated factors that may go into that with the rail underneath. If you cut too low, you'll be able to see the frame inside of this hole. So the, the window would have to be so high. And then, of course, we run into the higher you go, the more of the roundness we get into. So that means it's got to get cut deeper here. How would that align with the side window? There's some complicated factors in if we create a window in these serrations, are we actually going to get anything we want out of it? Or is it just a really small window that doesn't really do anything? So um, I'm bouncing around that idea, but currently it's going to be a side shave and a window. And then, of course, same over here. We'll do a side shave and then we'll do a small window over here with a couple of step down, something a little bit more intricate. Um, and then once again, uh, top window barrel porting. On this one, we're going to end up keeping the barrel close to the factory finish that it has now. Uh, we do use the laser to port the barrel. Like all of our other videos, those ports do not come straight out the top, but they actually lean forward, almost like you'd see with these serrations where the, if the porting was here, the gas is actually going kind of sort of up into the left or towards that front sight. So um, it, it functions a little bit better. If you want to know a little bit more about our porting, because we don't go into it as much anymore, go back and watch our Glock video. The Glock video has an absolute ton of in of content and information on how that porting works and how our style is a little bit different than what is available on the market functionally and uh, uh, just visibly, you know, how it works and how, how it runs. Um, guys, with that being said, you know, that's the idea here is to do a little cut work and then uh, do a little bit of barrel porting, put everything back. Um, I'm not 100% sure what color we're going with on this. I think it's going to be back to black. We don't stock the color, but the black that typically would match this is graphite black so that would be one of the closest colors that you would be picking we do not stock that i happen to have some here for this project so if we're going to go with black i'll put that on here um and then we'll be able to see a little bit you know how close that is i don't have a frame here so we won't be able to do a, a match to it however um we do have a couple pictures i'll add at the end of the video of a different prodigy we did with ray cuts on the top which is an also that's an offered service and that does have graphite black so that will show you a little bit more of the the uh, frame and the slide put together and how those uh, two colors sort of flow back together uh, last but not least one of the things i'm noticing here and i don't think this will be a standard service but i might just run it on this gun is these corners seem to be hit pretty hard on some sort of a holster you can see that right here and i, I can include some pictures um, for better clarity but the idea is whenever this is going inside of some holster it's getting you know basically slammed here and here um, I may run a chamfer on that edge right there just to kind of knock that down a little more ease of um, I guess 
insertion, you know, so as it's going into a holster with a little bit of an angle here, that would probably be a less aggressive point and hopefully it would last a little bit longer. Once again, I don't think that's something that we would offer as a standard service. However, we've done a lot of work for this customer, so it's something I'm just gonna probably run while it's in the CNC machine, and I will show you guys what that looks like in the end. Um, who knows, maybe we'll you know, maybe we'll add it as a charge or something like that if, if it seems to make sense. Um, guys, at this point, I think what we need to do is get to the CNC machine. We're gonna run some cut work. We are gonna do some uh, barrel porting. I don't know how much of that you guys will see. I say that because it is kind of hard to film. Um, the, the laser's so bright, you know, so sometimes things don't, don't stay in focus and things like that. We may include some pictures. Of course, after we pull the barrel off, we may include what does that barrel look like before we've cleaned it to give you an idea that it has to be cleaned, and then what does it look like after we've cleaned it, right? So to kind of give you the clean up. So it's kind of one of those deals. We may take you guys through that a little bit more to give you more uh, clarity on just sort of what that takes to in order to process that, that uh, portion of the work. Guys, let's jump into this. All right, guys, it looks like we're all back together. We've added some color to the slide. I have some notes, a couple things I want to talk about. There is some detailed information I want to go over with you guys. Of course, we've got some barrels out here. I want to discuss those and what some options may be. Let's jump into the cut work and let's move into uh, what we're going to end up doing as far as the color goes. And then last but not least, let's talk about those barrels. So for the first main service that we did discuss uh, at the beginning of the video was the barrel porting. That was kind of number one. Um, that is obviously the biggest request that we do see come through is, you know, do you offer barrel porting? Uh, what does it look like? Can it be done? Um, so that was the number one service on this build was, you know, the barrel porting portion. Um, secondary was adding the extra weight reduction, the windows and things. Side shave, multiple step down window. We're going to be able to see some nice barrel here. Um, we did discuss a little at the beginning that, hey, maybe we were going to do some, some miniature side windows, right? In those serrations, right? Additional cuts inside of the serrations. I'm super happy that we did that. I think they came out really, really nice. I was just unsure of how much clarity we would get through them as far as the barrel goes, which we will show here in a little bit. Um, I am just over excited about the overall design of how this came out. Uh, comparing it against the factory, right? The weight reduction, the windows, the porting. I mean, it's such a nice uh, option and avenue now to make changes to the already nice weapon that exists. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Hmm. I just absolutely love it. So same thing over here, side shave, multiple step down window. Of course, we did some, some windows inside of there. We've got a real nice chamfer on the top of where our barrel porting is. That's one of the things I want to touch base on. Um, there are a lot of companies out there that do uh, barrel porting and they come in different uh, forms and fashion. Of course, we've discussed that in some of our other our videos on how they are a little bit different, how they work a little bit different. Um, one of the things I think that kind of sets our porting aside a little bit is not only those ports, but it's also the way in which we chamfer our slides. When you get into a 1911, they're rounded on the top. We do see this in several other weapons that are out on the market, like um, the PO1s and, and the variances of the CZs. And a lot of it comes down to how clean and what does that clarity look like for the uh, for those actual top porting, so ours is designed with a, a fairly large funneled uh, chamfer on here. And then what we do is, if you if you take note here, and it'll be hard. There's a little lip left right there. So if you can kind of see, it's got a little straight up there. So what actually happens is the gas could hit that ledge here, and when it gets to the very top, it would drive straight up instead of towards the front side. So um, instead of having it as an angle cut all the way through on that chamfer, we do leave a little bit of a tail left over, and I'll I'll try to include a picture. And what that does is it allows that gas to be redirected straight up at the very end instead of continuously moving forward. So it's kind of got like a little deflection wall there. I really like the way that that comes out. Guys, we did not end up going with the graphite black. This build is going to end up being uh, sniper gray. And I have seen a picture of the frame. Now, of course, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't manage any of that portion of the work. So if you do see any pictures that are included in this video or if you happen to see it posted over onto our Instagram, just take note that the frame wasn't done by us. I think it looks amazing. I think it's going to be a really unique and cool build but it is one of those things that if you request it in the future that hey can I get my frame like that it's not really the portion of the work that we offered so it's not really something that we do so uh, with that being said that's kind of just kind of your little disclaimer there that we do single color but the frames got some other colors on it and it's not really a service that we offer or at least we don't offer at this time let's talk about some of these barrels. Let's talk about what we end up doing with the factory barrel and then I want to talk to you guys about these other ones here so one of the things that we run into um, on 
all barrels whenever we do a porting is there's usually a really rough burr. So um, whenever you would do the actual laser cutting itself, and once again, I will include some pictures. You can see these are cut at an angle and not straight out the top. The idea is there would be a burr up into here, right? So we would have to remove that burr. In this case, we did want to keep the barrel as close to factory style and appearance um, as we could. So you do have a lot of different options, which we'll discuss here in a moment as far as uh, coatings and as far as other finishes. Um, but the idea is that we wanted to keep it as close to the factory appearance as we could. So in that case, what we ended up doing was an oil down with a 1500 grit hand lap. Um, so the idea is we basically resurfaced the barrel on the smooth plane in order to bring the luster back to the surface, uh, take off any burrs that may have been there, um, and then allow it just to kind of kind of sort of keep that factory finish. One of the things I didn't really get into as much and didn't really notice, I guess I should say, is if you look at the barrel, the barrel has some, some lines in it, and it's hard to tell right here. And really that's what it is, is wherever it was tooled, you can see them down through here, Wherever they tooled this barrel, it wasn't 100% smooth, right? So if you were to do a lap over this, you would typically put a piece of paper all the way around it, and then you would run it, you know, like a U-shape, and then any of those low spots would uh, potentially not get hit, and the high spots, you know, would, would obviously get hit. Um, and that's kind of where we are, and uh, that just kind of goes to show a little bit that the barrels aren't 100% true, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, in the 1911 world, um, these barrels are slight, you know, sl slight uniquely cut. Um, they're the same diameter here. They're thicker here. They taper in. They've got lugs on them. The lugs come down the sides. Uh, it's just one of those deals. You can see there's a groove cut line here where it's been tooled. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of this stuff is hidden. At the end of the day, it's just something to take into consideration when you are talking about uh, doing some sort of a service on that part and what does it look like in the end. And of course, this wasn't a full job. I wouldn't call this uh, technically a full job as far as a treatment goes because we were just doing a cleanup on it um, and you can see it's been you know shot quite a bit we we didn't even uh, do a full cleanup on this end because it sort of didn't really have anything to do with us but we did our best to to kind of clean it a little bit here and this is still matte down and through this zone uh, but once again I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Um, I think there's some other options. There's some better solutions if you're looking for something a little bit more pristine in the end as a final piece, but this is kind of what the project was for this one. Let's talk about um, some of the other options that you do have. First and foremost, if you want to keep the barrel looking close to this as you could, you could go with a straight up polish, okay? And then that would mean that all the rough areas and all the outside exposed areas would be completely buffed in. They would look like chrome with the exception of probably the lug um, it may get some, but not a lot. Um, and of course, all this would look pretty good too. So that's kind of one of the things I would maybe go for is actually put it on a wheel and actually run it. I recommend that because there's no finish on that barrel. So you don't really have to worry about it like peeling, chipping, fading, cracking, something like that because there's no finish on there. The other option that you could go with is something more like a satin finish. So that's what this is. This is a stainless barrel that we end up running a treatment on and we would end up basically using a special blend of glass media. We use a couple different types and it would go through a process and through a step procedure that would allow it to come to a finish like this and it would be a little bit more of a matte finish instead of a high gloss shiny finish. I'm rolling stuff over here. And um, the idea is, you know, it's also a raw finish, right? It doesn't allow it to, to chip or crack or peel or fade you know if you do have wear marks um, on the barrel those would come back to shiny and we would see that again same as this so there these there are certain areas of these barrels that do rub right they're just a rubber as far as it comes to a barrel every, everything they touch it grinds and um, those services would come back to being shiny but the majority of the barrel that's non-touched would stay more of like what would be like a matte or a satin look. So that is an option. Um, I do recommend something like this. It's a full treatment of the barrel. Last but not least, you could go with some sort of a color, right? So this is just a black color that we offer. Um, this barrel's been ran pretty hard. This is a canic barrel, and you can see that it has started to chip. Now, uh, each and every gun is going to be a little bit different, whether you're watching this video and you're not looking at a Prodigy, but you're looking at something else. The idea is that every barrel is going to wear and rub different. You can see this one's got a line down and through here because it touches on the bottom of the ring. Of course, it's got a really rough entry here where it locks up on the gun. So these are things that you're gonna run into. So if you were to take your barrel out of your gun now and just look at it, just like, how does it look right now? Any of those areas that have rub lines, which is usually up on the center here and usually on the bottom down in this zone, those are all gonna come back to the surface with any kind of a coating, right? So because the 1911 style weapons are so tight, they're just a tight fitting barrel, there's nothing wrong with that, but that is part of the way that which they are designed versus some of the other 
uh, weapons that are out on the market, you can expect that a wear like this is going to come fairly quick into the surface. Now, it is a stainless barrel, so it's not like, you know, it's going to rust or anything, but at the end of the day, this would not be my choice, just because these are uh, known for, for high wear, right? So there's just it's just not the way to go. Um, so those are kind of your options. Of course, you can go a different direction. You could go with uh, a satin finish or a finish like this, and then you could send it out and have a black nitride, which is more like an in the coating, in the metal coating and not on the metal coating. Uh, we no longer offer for that service but there are other services that are out there that would accommodate maybe what you're looking for um, however uh, I just think that the way to go is probably either some sort of a, just a, a raw cleanup a uh, polish or a satin I think those are, are probably the way to go and of course that keeps the barrel very close to what it looks like from the factory let's take a look and put it into the uh, slide I want to see kind of overall I want to show you guys overall uh, what this looks like I'm working behind the, uh, the camera here so we'll do our best here so one of the things that we are going to recommend whenever you send it in is to send your spring in. I say that because if you take a look at this, these do move. Even when they're locked in here, they'll go left and right quite a bit. And we want to make sure that your porting is aligned correctly. So we would actually put the spring in here when we do the aligning for the porting. I love it. It looks really, really good. I'm super happy with it, with the way that it came out. And, and overall, I can't emphasize enough and say enough how happy I am with those front side windows um, that are in there. They may not be for everybody. And, um, you know, it may be something that we change in the future. They may be bigger. There may be less of them. There may be a bigger window uh, over here or a smaller window. Things, things do change. We are a company that's always progressively making changes to, um, to what it is that we offer. And I would encourage you to always watch... Uh, or always look at the pictures. This video is the first one, so it's, it gives you a, a really good demonstration of what it is, uh, what was the thought process, what was the process to do the work and things like that. But we would always encourage you to watch and to look through those uh, additional content that's in the service listing because that would be the newest and how it looks uh, when you send it in now. Guys, let's talk about that a little bit. So there's going to kind of sort of be two different listings. One is going to be barrel porting only, right? Because some people just, they don't want the windows, they want the barrel porting, and they're going to go from there. So there will be two different listings. One of those is going to be just for your barrel porting and no, no additional cut work. And then, of course, you can add the barrel porting to the cart. And then you can also go back and add the window service to the cart, right? So on the window service, you're probably going to end up seeing a couple different options. One of those is going to be a top window because maybe you want to just get the top window, but you don't want to get it barrel ported, right? So that's going to be one of the options. The other one's going to be your side shave with your side window. And then we're going to have the front uh, serration window. So you're going to kind of see three different options here that you can select yes and no to. So you may say, hey, I want, you know, I want this and I want the window on the top, but I don't want the sides, you know, so you, you would select no to this. Or I want this and I want this, but I don't want these, then you would select no to the, to the serration window. So this is very much a la carte. This does allow you to pick the services that you want instead of paying for an entire package of maybe something that you fully don't agree on or want or just like the style of, right? So that is one of the beauties about us as a business is you are able to pick what fits your needs best. Um, so we would encourage you to, you know, to do it that way. The biggest warning I can give you is if you want to build it out just like this, you will want to go into the window service and select the top window as no, and then yes, and then yes, and then Cerakote would be yes. And then when you go into barrel porting, you would just do barrel porting. And I say that because whenever we do the barrel porting, we have to do the top window, right? So we don't want to charge you for the window service, which would include the window, and then charge you for the barrel porting service, which you're getting charged for the window. So make sure you select no on, the, on that top window if you're doing the barrel porting because it comes with it. Um, so guys, overall, really, really happy um, how it came out. I think it's a really cool design. I'm really excited to see some of this new stuff hit the market. We've got some other stuff that we are working on. Um, we're taking things a little bit slower because we have a lot of building uh, activities going on here, which there will be an updated video on that fairly soon. We're, we're into the year. Um, we're coming up onto the year time frame uh, as far as being here. So we did a, a, video, a, you know, a video when we first moved in about some of the difficulties. We've got some another, another update video kind of going on with that. Um, but we do have some good, cool, new, unique uh, stuff coming um, out as far as you know, what's, what's being offered on some of this other stuff and how may that uh, fit with your lineup, right? Because we do have a lot of these weapons that are out there. Um, I would always encourage you to go over to our Instagram. This is posted days early on our Instagram. You can see the comments, the feedback, the things like that. 
Of course, uh, the video gives you the most detailed information. That is why we do still put out the YouTube videos when we have the time. Um, but Instagram is kind of the place to go. And then everything gets posted over onto our Facebook as well, with the exception of videos. So if we post videos on our Instagram, they do not get posted over onto our Facebook. Um, only uh, still picture content gets moved over to the to the Facebook account. So um, Instagram is sort of the place to be. If you don't do it, you can always go on Facebook and kind of just wait for a follow up. Usually, if we post a video of something, we will post a um, a picture of the same one, uh, even though it's kind of a double post. But it'll allow people to see on Facebook that don't you know that don't do Instagram. So, guys, if you need anything, feel free to reach out. Let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have, and um, you can kind of just catch us on the next video.